This is ACC basketball with Clemson, Duke, Georgia Tech, Maryland, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia, and Wake Forest. This live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, by Piedmont Airlines, by Hardee's, by Jefferson Pilot, by Mazda, by Holly Farms, by Gillette, in North Carolina by NCNB National Bank, in South Carolina by South Carolina National Bank, and in Virginia by Central Fidelity Bank. This is the Alexander Memorial Coliseum in Atlanta, Georgia, the home of the Tech Yellow Jackets, set to host the Maryland Terrapins. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with Billy Packer, and it's great to have you with us for ACC basketball tonight. It's another game that they're all talking about, Lefty Brazell winning his 500th game. I know Lefty's tired of hearing about it. We're tired of hearing about it. Has it become a distraction for that team, do you think? It probably has, Mike. And one of the things that Coach tries to do is get his team to play the best of their potential. Maryland has not been doing that, particularly the effort they gave in the Clemson game. So maybe this 500-win business is really affecting their ball club. If you like statistics, take a look at the one that shows Bobby Crimmins is 7-2 and two against Maryland since he came into the ACC. That really shocks me, Mike, uh, when you consider what Bobby started out with. And Lefty's had some really fine teams during that period of time. Sometimes you find a coach that can get an edge on another coach, and there's no apparent reason for it. But, of course, Bobby Crimmins has done an excellent job holding this club, and Lefty has year after year put out an outstanding team himself. Now, coming into this game, neither team is coming off an outstanding performance. That's for sure. I haven't really been able to figure out Georgia Tech. You know, they've lost to some bottom, bottom echelon teams and have done so well against the top teams. Virginia is really improving, as everybody knows, but I didn't expect them to go up there and not come away with a victory. In the case of Maryland, I already mentioned at Clemson, they did not play well. Clemson, another team that's rapidly improving. Of course, part of the show with the heat is on, and that's what's true. You're trying to get your team to peak and get ready for the ACC tournament, and then beyond that in the postseason uh, play nationally. And this is something that both of these coaches have some pressure on. They've got to get their teams peaking up. For well, Tech still at 7-4 and four is still number one, but there you see the other four pretenders to it. Maryland could drop out with a loss tonight. Well, Vic Bubis is the first guy I ever heard said it, that someday the ACC will have all teams at 7-7. Seven and seven. That's the way the season will end. And you can see that in my, my years of covering the games, I've never seen anything like this in regard to a conference race from top to bottom. All right, we'll see what happens tonight for the starting lineups for tonight's game. Let's go to public address announcer John Culver. The Alexander Memorial Coliseum, where tonight the Maryland Terrapins take on the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Here tonight's starting lineups. For Maryland, at forward, a 6'8 junior from Landover, Maryland, number 31, Lynn Bias. For Georgia Tech, at forward, a 7-foot junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 22, John Sally. Six seven freshman from Temple Hills, Maryland. Number 33, Derek Lewis. For Georgia Tech, at forward, a 6'6 six six freshman from Towson, Maryland. Number 33, Dwayne Farrell. For Maryland, at center, a 6'8 sophomore from Glen Allen, Virginia. Number 32, Terry Long. For Georgia Tech, at center, a 6'11 senior from Cap Haitian, Haiti. Number 54, Yvonne Joseph. Maryland at guard, a 6'5 sophomore from Grimesland, North Carolina. Number three, Keith Gatlin. For Georgia Tech at guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Manhattan, New York. Number 45, Bruce Darabault. For Maryland at guard, a 6'8 senior from Largo, Maryland. Number 24, Adrian Branch. And for Georgia Tech at guard, a 6'0 junior from Edith, Oklahoma. Number 25, Mark Price. Coach for Maryland is Lefty Drizel. Head coach for Georgia Tech, Bobby Crimmins. Here are the officials for tonight's game. Maryland against Georgia Tech. It will be Hank Nichols, Jim Birch, and Pete Pavia. We will be back with the start of tonight's game right after this. And up there. Traditionally, Maryland has been an excellent rebounding team, but this year they have been out-rebounded. Mark Price with the ball for Georgia Tech in those shiny gold uniforms with the blue trim. And a little box and one right off the bat. Mark Price being handled by Gatlin. Box and one. Maryland playing four guys in the zone and Gatlin chasing Price. That's exactly what Virginia was able to do twice to Price this year with great success. Nobody else took up the slack. I'll tell you what makes this tough uh, defense for the Maryland lineup. They have 
such good overall team size in other positions. Joseph with the miss, got his own rebound, comes out with the loose ball, and then he turned it over. And no, Joseph, they didn't call it. <laughs> Joseph was recruited by Lefty Grizzell, almost thought about going there, and it looks like he likes to play against Lefty. If he had not come to Georgia Tech, he would have come to Maryland. Lefty, the, that big center that he can really use now. This is Price to Perrell. Oh, by driving at his own block. And that was Derek Lewis. What a great block. Lewis has blocked 78 shots so far this year. He's only 6'7", 195 pounds. Say only because he's playing center. Here we go, straight man-to-man -man on the part of Georgia Tech. Match up to watch Dalrymple on Branch, who's really been having his problems lately. Let's see if Dalrymple keeps him in the doldrums or Branch breaks out. Tough defensive player. This is Gatlin who had a great game. Billy against Clemson. Incredible game. 14 out of 15 shooting. A flawless floor game. Get that out of your point guard. You don't expect to lose. This is by a shot clock is down to five seconds. Nobody realizes it yet. Gatlin working on Price. Leans into one. Tried to draw the foul. Had to take the shot. Long has the loose ball and it comes out to Price. Tech likes to run. Price toward the middle. Down the lane. Nice dish off. Pharrell blocked by Bias. Foul on Bias. Mark Price to keep himself in balance coming down down the court. Gatlin's going to reach in. Price changes hands, goes by him, protects the ball with his body. Very good pass, and Pharrell goes in for the second time today to try to get a stuff. That one is uh, fouled by Bias coming over the backside. Maryland has uh, worked a variety of defenses against Georgia Tech this year. Earlier in the season at Hawaii, Mark Price scored the winning basket on a layup against a man-to-man -man defense at the end of the game, came back to the second game. And they switch to a zone near the end of the game to keep doing just that. Now they're playing the box and one. And the free throw makes it 1-0, Georgia Tech. Okay, you got straight man to man. Price on Gatlin. Now Ripple over there on Branch. Sally gets caught in a switch, and he's over on Bias. This is Lewis in the middle over Pharrell. Won't go rebound, Joseph. You can see Georgia Tech wants to run. Really pushing the ball down court rapidly. Great ball moving inside the Sally. Double pump won't go Pharrell. And if this is Maryland's biggest, strongest rebounding lineup, so far they're getting killed. Well, they are inside, and you've got terrific size in the part of Georgia Tech. Plus, you've got Dowry, who's a great rebounding crasher from the outside. Loose ball picked up by Long. Smart move by Long not to take that jump shot on Sally. Sally was poised for the block. Bias with that pure jump shot comes up short on this one. Price through traffic. It's a two-on-one. Gatlin in the middle. This is Pharrell. Smart play by Pharrell, even though he missed the shot. He used the rim to protect the ball. That's a good fast break. Gatlin did a nice job there because I didn't think that he realized Pharrell was on his backside. Yvonne is... Joseph on Bias. That's some matchup. Bias will work just as hard as he possibly can. Joseph is a load to try to around, push around if he gets a blow in the blocks. I'm surprised Pharrell is coming that far out to play Lewis. Lewis not going to shoot beyond 12, 15 feet. Shot clock now down to seven seconds. Bias got Joseph off his feet, drives by him, missed the shot, but here's the whistle. Offensive foul, Leonard Bias. That is two on Len Bias in the first three minutes, three and a half minutes. See, Bias makes a great move to get by Yvonne Joseph. Really a quick move right here. By him, and he goes up in the air. Pharrell's waiting for him on the weak side. Good call. 3-0, Georgia Tech, 16-25 to go, first half. Tech has beaten Maryland twice this year. That 72-60 score, the biggest margin of defeat Maryland has suffered all season long. Joseph with a miss. That's the shot that'll be open against this defense. You've got three guys playing along the back line, each in advantage in the foul line, and Gatlin chasing man to man. We hit the 16-minute mark. Maryland still looking for its first points. Bias trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Joseph. Ron Joseph's an excellent athlete for a man his size. He just hasn't played that much basketball. Branch on down, Ripple, and Branch gave it up. Goes to Bias. Maryland being very, very patient. Now Branch reach in by Dow Ripple. Knocked it out of bounds. The foul will be on Dow Ripple, his first. And we have a timeout. 15 minutes, 48 seconds to go. First half of play in Atlanta. It's Georgia Tech 3, Maryland nothing. Introducing three all-new 1986 Mazda B2000 trucks. Trucks so advanced, the words that describe them best may never have been used to describe any truck. 
Words like roomy, quiet, responsive, aerodynamic. Bryce, two years ago, the rookie of the year in this league. His teammate Bruce now Oracle a year ago. Billy, you could take those five guys to start your own franchise. No, you really would. Ralph at center, Sam and Michael at the forwards, and Bryce and Dorrimple at the guards, and I think you do fairly well. Not half bad. And we may be looking at next year's, and Dwayne Farrell is on the court right now for Detroit Tech. Bias down the lane. Maryland still hasn't scored. Now they have. That's a smart move by Lenny Bias. Setting up right at the top of the key. And that gives him a whole court to work with against Javon Joseph. And he uses quickness against Joseph's power. Dalrymple gets it to Sally to Price, who ran around a screen. A good shot from that range, even on the run. But Sally has the offensive rebound. Follow up. John Sally hurt himself. He actually jammed his body into the side of the backboard. Go into that back row. Bias again down the lane, one up. Now, Let's take a look Sally, see what we see. Sally's it. holding it. You see him right here. Price puts the shot up. Sally going to get the rebound. He wasn't sure whether he wanted to go ahead and dunk this or not. Now watch him go up. He's going to jam his body. No, it was. I thought he went into the back board. He actually hit Derek Lewis's elbow. He is really hurt. No, he's still uh, got a lot of pain on his face. Down to 15 minutes. Shooting foul is what's not play. It's 3 2 Georgia Tech. And what has been a really slow start. Georgia Tech in a little zone right now. 1 2 2. Bias is the one man Count offensive it. show. Count it. Boy, he has that down to his science. Well, we watched him shooting at practice, and he's, he's just scary. He stays up there forever. That made a couple actually going out of bounds. That's right. 4 3 Maryland with its first lead. 14 32 to go first half. This is a big, big game for both clubs, especially for Maryland, because they have five losses. This is Price. percentage shots. I mean, it's almost like a, a delay game at the end of the game. We don't worry about scoring. And in this uh, time in the game, obviously, you've got to put some points in the board. Speedy Jones has checked in for Maryland for the first time. The junior college transfer from uh, Allegheny. There's that very unusual defense again. Georgia Tech will find shots right at the, the foul line extended. This is Price. Got by Gatlin this time. Oh, Bang. Today. What a shot. Gee whiz. That's four for Price. Remember in the beginning of the year how Mark Price just couldn't get that positive jump shot. Looked right. a little tired in the legs. But boy, he's got it going now. It is 9 for Georgia Tech. Try to get the ball to Branch. Finally got it after a loose ball. And that's a tough shot for Branch. And he carried it. One of the great streak shooters you'll ever see. That's a great shot because he had Dalrymple trying to go for the steal. And Joseph jumping out in front of him. Branch, the third all-time scorer for Maryland. Bias number 11 already. Oh, does he want to play? Joseph did not get the shot down after a great move. Now Bobby Grimmins, Joseph's the kind of guy, when you're sitting on that bench as a coach, you want him to make a basket, to relax him a little bit. So far tonight, he hasn't been able to get one. Bias to Jones and back to Bias. Partially blocked and the foul on Sally. Well, you just looked at two of the best players in, in this conference going head-to-head -head against each other on a jump shot. Bias can go up to, uh, I don't have any idea how high he can really jump. Sally goes with him. Now here's that Joseph making that move inside. Doesn't get the shot, but an excellent power move. And at the line goes Glenn Bias, hitting 77%. 
scored in double figures 44 straight games. He's really become a mark. Man. This is Antoine Ford in the ballgame for Bobby Crimmins. And Devon Joseph will get a breather. Ford has really come on and been able to give him some quality minutes. Now Bobby Crimmins, one of those coaches able to recruit guys that grow. <laughs> Ford, another one. Good move by Price. Jeff Adkins in the ballgame for Maryland. The man chasing Price is number 10. And it looks like Lefty is going to get coming over the back. What Lefty's going to do is alternate people on Price to try to wear him on down. Great ball movement on that last sequence from George. A couple little touch passes in there. The foul was on Ford. That'll stop the clock with 11.49 to go in the game. Very low scoring contest. Georgia Tech 9, Maryland 7. A look at the Maryland bench and Adrian Branch coming off uh, after talking with the coaching staff. He is uh, not doing that well in the scoring department in the last four games, especially against Clemson. He really had a bad game against Clemson. The effort wasn't there. When you don't have effort in this league, you're in real serious trouble. Adrian, as you pointed out, Mike's a very explosive scorer, a streak-type player. And he came out tonight in warm-ups uh, looking like he really wanted to play. So we'll see how it goes. He's up against a great defender, though, in Dowerman. Georgia Tech has already had twice as many shots as Maryland, 14 to 7, and that's because they have been killing them on the board. Branch and Atkins. Top man and man defense. This is Derek Lewis. Georgia Tech played with such intensity. Here's the alley oop to Bob. Oh, what a catch. Got the shot up, but Antoine Ford may have gotten a piece of it. Now Ripples down with a rebound. You've got some real leapers in this game. Everybody playing up above the rim. Antoine Ford, cross court to Dowry. That's a shot that's open. Right there, Dowry has got to take that shot. This is Farrell in the lane, short on the jumper. Ford, offensive rebound, really threw that one up. <laughs> Dalrymple. How about that? He pinned that right down on his feet. That, now, he's that's... averaging six and a half rebounds a game. Still in that defense. Very unusual box in one type. I mean, they're not really playing a box. They're playing three along the back. Farrell had it blocked by Branch. Wow, Another Lewis. block inside by Lewis. That's two for him. I haven't seen this many good blocks in a basketball game in a long, long time. I mean, we've got everybody hustling up above that rim. Well, you've got, I guess, the two premier shot blockers in the conference right now with Sally and, uh, and uh, uh, Lewis. That's right. But everybody else seems to have their hands up there tonight also. Georgia Tech, 13 rebounds. Maryland only six. This is Adkins, the Lynn Bias, 9-7 Tech. Branch making those one-on-one -on -one moves that he does so well, and Adrian Branch is at two straight. Lefty has got to like the intensity of his ball club tonight compared to what they did down at Clemson. Again, not taking anything away from Clemson, but as a coach, you want your team to give you all-out effort. Some nights the baskets don't go in. Should always be there. This is Price. Left hand. Left hand. He's practicing that warm-ups. Rebound by Lewis. That's not the shot Bobby Crimmins wants out of Mark no. Price. He, he'd like him to use him in practice at 6.30 this evening. <laughs> this is Adkins with Price on him. Keith Gap in the point guard. Not in the ballgame right now. This is Branch. Dal Ripple with him. Inside to Speedy Jones, and Pharrell went down, slipped. Speedy Jones, an excellent jump shooter also. Now Maryland can just shore themselves up on the boards. They can play with anybody. Maryland has the lead, 11 to 9. Nine minutes, 18 seconds to go first half. Almost a steal by Branch. Now he does get the ball, and Dow Ripple gets it back to Price. Look Tough out. Shot. Branch influenced that shot. Mark Price is forcing it. This is a jam. Bias. He's just pretty to watch. He already has seven points, the leading scorer in the conference, and he has Maryland up by four. Georgia Tech has yet to figure out where the jump shots are. They're going to find her at the foul line extended. They've got to get somebody there and take a couple and then crash the boards. There's a whistle on the foul underneath, and Jeff Adkins really hot about the call. I've never seen Adkins show that much temper on a court. That's his first. Billy, two games earlier this year, Virginia played that same defense, and Georgia Tech was never, even though they won one of the games, never solved it the entire game. They really didn't. We had that Virginia game down here. Mark Price gets a little bit nervous and wants to put a shot up. They just have to be patient. Terry Long comes into the ball game uh, for Maryland. Martinson in also for Georgia Tech. Bobby Crimmins realizing Mark Price getting a little edgy. 
Good Martins and Eddie giving the ball, handing a little team continuity. Let's see what Lefty does defensively now with Price out of the game. They're going to play Dalrymple with the one man. And Adkins is the one man. This is Scott Petway, and he walked. Again, Georgia Tech not looking for the jump shot that's there. Adkins running the ball glove for Maryland. Guarded by Martins, the freshman who was getting more and more minutes for Bobby Kermit. Is what, he, what he needs is a guard to come off that bench. Lewis down the lane. What a block by Sally. She, John Sally, and, and he's pointing out to the coach, he really could have caught that ball. He was up so high, and his timing was so perfect, he could have caught caught the ball right and, and cupped it. Oh. Branch leads it. Sally snuffs another one. Branch with a rebound. He is something to watch. This is quite a show. Got some great athletes out here. Down ripple on Branch. Well, you win with defense, and both of these teams are playing hard tonight. This is Bias guarded by Petway. Tough matchup for Petway. Anybody really shot missed. Branch had his hands on the rebound. Look at that. Ripple comes out with it. And then he hit the floor and rolled over. Now, and they didn't call him for a travel until he rolled over. Now, the key there is if you're standing and you have possession of the ball and you fall down, it's automatically a walk. Good call. Timeout was 7.49 to go first half as we watch John Sally. It's Maryland by four. On top was 7.49 to go first half. The announcers for this telecast were approved and selected by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception without the written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. How many shots have we had blocked so far in this one? At least a half know. a dozen. <laughs> you can see nobody's shooting very well. Georgia Tech, four for 19. But, mm. Now Maryland's starting to pick back up on rebounding. They were really uh, out-rebounded early. I think they got about four in one possession, so that really doesn't tell the story it ought to. The story that, that I see out here compared to Sunday's game is the intensity of Maryland play. Sally intercepts the bounce pass by Tom Jones to Dalrymple. Price is back in. Dalrymple can sure do a lot more as an overall player than when he first came here. Joseph inside scores, and he's fouled by Lewis. Sigh of relief. Excellent bounce pass by Dalrymple. Yvonne Joseph holds his man off, who happened to be Speedy Jones on that one. Does a good job getting the bounce pass, making the catch before he goes up for the shot. Remember, stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking the Holly Farms player of the game from each school. A lot of guys out there who have won them before. Joseph uh, would love to play Maryland every night with those stats. He gives it a doggone. Huh? <laughs> Wife Joyce is here. The chancellor of the university is here tonight. Love to see him win the 500. That's why they came. Price around a screen. Nice pass to Joseph. Oh, he tried to get it to Dalrymp. A little tough to catch. Yeah, that, that was really not a good pass. A big man catches the ball inside. He ought to handle it all with two hands. Unless his name's Bill Walton or something. You know, catch that ball with two hands and drop it off. Seven minutes, three seconds left. Hard to believe that the score is only 13 to 11. Both of these teams can light it up, but they're playing some kind of defense right now. Bias and Branch exchanging it outside. Adkins wants the ball back. This is tournament intensity right here. I, I think the start of the night's show was so interesting. The heat is on. You can just <laughs> tell these players are feeling it. Branch to Adkins. Inside to Bias. Double team. Turnaround jumper. Got it. Len Bias. Nine points out of Maryland's 15. Petway had to catch that pass. It would have stuck to him if he'd have missed it. That Derek Lewis is as good a defensive player for his size as I've seen. So quick off his feet, always in position. Adkins. Out of bias. It's 15-13. Maryland by two. Branch. Oh, just dicked the front of the rim. Tipped out of bounds, and it's out to tech. Branch felt that he could go by Yvonne Joseph. Dowerful did a good job coming over to help out on that play. Price calling out the play for Bobby Kremen. This is the third oh. time these teams have played. What a screen Joseph said. <laughs> Sally. Oh, oh, what a jam. Holy cow. And Len Bias just put his head down and covered. That was excellent ball movement by Georgia Tech. They're starting to 
catch on. They got Derek Lewis in the air that time. He sailed by South. Whenever you run a trick defense like Maryland's doing, once a team figures out what's going on and where the openings are, it's really difficult to stop them. Branch inside to Lewis, moving on Joseph. Back to Branch, lost it. Still loose. Now Ripple just all over the place. Hustle back. Adkin. No, Joseph, another rebound. Senior on a very young ball club still. Joseph wants it. He was rebounded walking, Jones. That play, I thought but again, so. The effort is really there. And lefty's calling for the walk. Mr. Brazil may have been right on that one. Yeah, I think he was. We're tied at 15 with 439 to go first half. Bias has been the story for Maryland. He has nine so far. And that way you'll have a hard time handling bias. The third time these teams have faced each other this year. Billy, if they would play again in the ACC tournament, that would be four. That was Petway with a miss. Joseph rebound. And a jump ball situation. Could be Maryland fault. And they could end up playing each other a fifth time if they should happen to meet in the NCAA. How'd you like to play anybody as tough as either one of these teams five times? That's right, almost like NBA. Joseph with a little push off. And Derek Lewis ties him up. And an alternating possession rule gives the ball to Maryland. Still tied at 15 points. These teams have scored 15 points apiece in 16 minutes. This is the most intense game that I've seen this year. And the defensive uh, pressure that people are putting on in the effort is really there. Jones, nice pass to Bias and a pretty move. The shot was go for it. Another rebound to Sally ahead to Price. Dalrymple open momentarily. Price didn't see him. Back out to Joseph. Here's Branch. Got Petway to beat. Watch this. And he's fouled by Petway. I don't think the basket will count, and it won't. Good foul by Petway. He got him before he started up. A good play by Adrian Branch, too. Hustling, knowing a the man's there. You see the concentration by Adrian. He knows the defender's coming. He hangs right on. There was the foul. Obviously, not a basket. Timeout with 3.27 to go in the half. We're still deadlocked at 15 from Atlanta. We'll be back after this word from Budweiser. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at the University of Maryland. We'll have our one for the books feature an earlier game between these clubs in the ACC tournament, and we'll take a look at the shot board. That's all coming up at halftime, so stay with us, and we only have 327 to go in the first half, tied at 15. Rebounds, Georgia Tech starting to pick up that advantage again. Speedy Jones and Adkins, along with Branch, Long, and Bias for Maryland. For Georgia Tech, it's Price, Dalrymple, Sally, Farrell, and Joseph to start it back in. Adkins to Speedy Jones. Adkins, a mix up in the signals there, almost to the point that I thought that Adkins was going to the wrong basket. It's four for Tom Jones, who was a transfer from Allegheny Community College out of Oak Hill, West Virginia. Maryland by two. This is Dalrymple. Left all alone is Farrell and won't take the shot. Bryce will. Farrell's got to take that jump shot. Sally, oh. what a pass to Farrell. He'll take that shot. And he is fouled by Tom Jones. Farrell is so tough down on the baseline. It's going to be a tough choice this year for who gets the Rookie of the Year award. This, this is some pass by Sally. He realized Farrell was there and then figured out a way to get it in. Jones does a good job staying inside. Commits the foul coming down on the arm. Morell one out of two, now one out of three. Morell not a good free throw shooter. Been in the line a little over 80 times this year and shooting 57%. Well, he, he line actually, drive that one. Well, he actually got faked out by the guys going in the lane. He actually should have got another shot on that one. Georgia Tech, as good a ball club as it is, is only shooting a mere 67.8 from the free throw line, and that could hurt them. Jones to Adkins, but it's knocked away by Price. Jones got it back. Double teamed again. Adkins to Long. Adrian Branch going to lose it. And they'll call Price for the foul. Mark Price reaching in. Got to give him A for effort. They did commit the foul on the arm. Just nothing easy tonight. Adrian Branch starting to trip. 
Price gets it one time, then reaches in there and picks up the foul. Branch will go to the free throw. No, no, I'm sorry. He will not go to the free throw line. That was only the 15 foul. Now left Adkins left all alone. Must be playing with two guards now. He has a very small team out on the floor. As Gatlin is back in, this is Dowling. 17-15, Maryland by two with 2.04. And no, no one is stalling. We still have the shot clock. Dalrymple can't save it. Look at, with this lineup that Lefty has on the floor, look for Georgia Tech to go inside now. They've got a much bigger lineup on the court. I'd expect them to get some offensive rebounds. Got Speedy Jones at 6-6 and a forward. Georgia Tech has turned the ball over six times here in the first half. We're down to 147, Maryland by two. Bias won that ball. He's got Farrell on him. Adkins gets Bias top of the circle. Got it. 11 oh. points for Len Bias. A little range there. That was a 19-footer. Make him from anywhere. 19-15, Maryland by four. Defense really has Georgia Tech confused. Farrell left alone. Dalrymple. Tech passing, still passing up those yep. shots. Don't pass it up to 12, 15 quarter. You've got to take it. Farrell to Dalrymple inside. Double clutch. Won't go. Adkins rebound. Gatlin wants the ball out there. And now they'll get it to him. Down to a minute to go. Gatlin tried to get it underneath. Great steal by Sally. Took twice. What a play that was. Right pulls up. Yes, sir. Six for Mark Price. Might as well go to like you were saying earlier. Go stand on that spot because this is going to pull up and shoot. 19 17. 38 seconds to go. Four second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Lefty wants last shot here. Bias. He could have gotten a layup if man, he's fouled at the baseline. That is only the sixth team foul against Georgia Tech. So it would be a non shooting foul. It's on Pharrell. And he's got 27 seconds. And this will be another full, uh, oh, they're going to call that up. That's not one and one yet. It wasn't a shooting foul. Lenny no, no. Bias went to the foul line. Next foul will be a one and one situation. Scott Petway comes in for Georgia Tech. Farrell comes out. Adrian Branch will check back in for Maryland. And Terry Long will come out. As tight as this game is, Mike, I would think that Maryland would hold it down for the last shot. Take a chance that that last two seconds, Georgia Tech can't do something with it. Unless you get an absolute layup don't want to give them another possession. Adkins with the ball. Maryland, uh, the shot clock now being off. It was reset after the foul. Maryland can take the last one. Adkins is holding it outside. Is it double stack they like to run? Ten seconds. Adrian Branch, the guy they like to have the hands with the ball. He's got it. Adkins, baseline. Won't go for him. Joseph rebound. One second left. Price doesn't get it off in time. That was good execution by Maryland. Go ahead and get that last shot. An unusually low halftime score. Maryland 19, Georgia Tech 17. I'm sure if anybody's tuning in right now, they're saying, geez, these guys must be playing terrible. But they're not. It's been a good ball game. I'd agree, Mike. The intensity level was there from the outset of this game. Whenever you play good, aggressive defense, as both of these teams have, Georgia Tech in their man-to-man -man and Maryland in their, you know, oddball Chinese-type right. defense, you get a great basketball game if you appreciate good defense. Does this low score of 1917, do you think this favors either team? Georgia Tech does not have a great bench, but then Maryland doesn't like to run that much. Well, one of the things that it hurts Georgia Tech in two ways. One, they won't get a chance to use their bench, and they won't need to, but they'll be tired. And when you play this hard defensively, you don't have a chance to rest very much. It's not like we're seeing a delay game out there. So I think it hurts Georgia Tech in two ways. One, they'll be tired. Their front guys will be tired. And two, they'd be better off in a transition game against the Maryland. Mark Price is facing these kind of defenses more and more, even though his scoring average is only around 16 points a game. It's really a tribute to Mark Price. Well, it is, but one of the reasons that he's seeing these kind of defenses is that his teammates are reluctant to take the shot that the oddball defenses are giving them. And when you see what we had with Virginia down here playing that box of one, the shots, the short jumpers are available. If Georgia Tech's not going to take those jumpers, then opposing coaches are going to say, hey, we're, we're successful in that kind of the defense. Well, it's 1917 at halftime. Stay with us. We'll take a look at all these things and more coming up right after this. Introducing three all-new 1986 Mazda B2000 trucks. Trucks so advanced the words that describe them best may never have been used to describe any truck. 
Words like roomy, quiet, responsive, aerodynamic, good handling, smooth riding. And the words great value also apply to the SE5, the LX, and the B2000 experience. The 1986 line of Mazda trucks. Experience it. She's here. We'll be right down. There's a new major airline in America. Maryland over Georgia Tech, 1917. The leading score is bias and price with 11 and 6. Right now, we want you to take a look at the University of Maryland at College Park. Ancient Greeks described education as a sound mind in a sound body. At the University of Maryland, the body and mind are brought together with a new sophistication as some remarkable teachers apply new technologies to the study of how we use our body. Faculty in the College of Physical Education, Health and Recreation use computers to chart the movement of a diver's jump and the form of a place kicker. By charting and recording muscle use in these activities, scientists can help athletes improve their performance. Such research also helps us understand more fully the human body and provides a base on which health sciences can better serve the needs of all of us. Similar techniques developed at the University of Maryland are now being applied to a wider range of human needs, from the doctor's office to the concert hall. Easing the recovery of strained limbs or improving the breathing muscles of singers and musicians. Maryland is in the forefront of such efforts because some remarkable people at the university have taken the wisdom of the past and added it to the science of today. Maryland, our business is knowledge. We're at halftime at Alexander Memorial Coliseum in Atlanta, Georgia, where Maryland leads Georgia Tech 19 to 17. Stay tuned as halftime continues after this word from your local ACC station. It was back in 1980, you people can remember, Georgia Tech really having a hard time that particular year. The University of Maryland having one of their great regular seasons. Buck Williams, Albert King, Ernie Graham, a super team for Maryland. Not much for Georgia Tech. They met in the opening round of the ACC tournament that year, and who will ever forget the game that Brooks Steppy had. That's the story in tonight's One for the Book. Today on One for the Books, we go back to February 28, 1980. It's the first round of the ACC tournament. And inside the Greensboro Coliseum, Georgia Tech is on the verge of a first round upset behind junior guard Brooks Steppy. Tech entered the field as the eighth seed, winning only one regular season game. The Jackets were determined to make their first visit to an ACC tournament a memorable one. Maryland appears to have clinched the win when Buck Williams connects giving the Terps a two-point lead in the last minute of regulation. It's last shot time for Tech. It goes to Steppy, and he hits at the buzzer. This one goes into overtime, tied at 43 apiece. Lefty Drizel tries to get his team up, and Albert King listens. He scores four in the overtime, 16 points for the game, and Maryland leads by two with just seconds to go. Steffi tries again for another tying shot. But this one won't go, and time runs out on Tech's upset bid. Maryland escapes with a two-point overtime win. Today's one for the books. 1917, Mike will bring you back in here at halftime. I'll never forget that ball game. A tremendous job by Brooks Steppy. Couldn't hit that last shot. Georgia Tech almost tapped it in. And what happened, it was two years later before Georgia Tech could ever get their first win in an ACC tournament against who? Maryland, of Maryland. course. Brooks Steppy was such a great player, and he didn't have a lot of help in those days. And now Georgia Tech's loaded with talent, although Bobby Crimmins will still not admit they're there. You know, I remember doing a game in this very gymnasium that particular year. Might have been the last game of the regular season for Georgia Tech against Wake Forest, and I believe they had about three or 400 paid in total attendance. Uh, uh, about 200 of those were, were, were Wake Forest fans. So a tremendous accomplishment by Georgia Tech and Bobby Crimmins for what they've got in basketball now. Another interesting thing they did, too, uh, I guess it was last year, Billy, they sold out the Omni for the North Carolina.
Carolina game, and they said, now we've arrived. When we can sell out the Omni for college basketball in Atlanta, we've made it. Well, I think what we're going to see here in another couple of years is Georgia Tech playing most of their games in the Omni. This place will never hold them. They keep playing this kind of basketball. Of course, there were a lot of people that I really don't think believe Bobby Crimmins could do what he has done at this school. He didn't rebuild a program. He took a program that virtually did not exist and has raised it to a level where he's in the top ten contender for the ACC championship. Now, for some people, that's hard to believe. Well, it really is, but I always felt that Georgia Tech, uh, once they joined the Atlantic Coast Conference, because of the natural recruiting territory in this area, plus the national reputation that it has, all they needed was a little motivation, and Bobby's the kind of guy that can really provide that. It's been a strange year in college basketball. I don't think I have ever seen the Atlantic Coast Conference like this, everybody with four or five losses. But that seems to be everywhere, too. It really does, Mike. You look at the SEC. I, I think a couple of days ago, I heard they were really complaining. Nobody's in the top 20. But if you look down that league, you don't know who to put there. There's so many teams that are competitive. The Big Ten, the same situation. And all over the Big East has two teams up at the top. They've got a couple of clubs also that will battle for NCAA position. Well, it makes every game fun to do, doesn't it? It really does. We'll be back with more of our halftime show right after this word from Budweiser. <laughs> Me and the crew, we're taking this road across Alaska. Welcome to Last Frontier. It's different. But when this road's finished and it's on the map, we can say we did that. It's for guys like T.J. Donahue that we make every Budweiser the best it can be. Beachwood aged and brewed with the kind of pride T.J. puts into his work. So to T.J. and all you guys out there like him, this Bud's for you. Everyone is worried about rising medical costs. But at Pilot Life, we're doing something about them. We've developed a practical cost containment program that monitors and evaluates charges, encourages second opinions and outpatient treatment, and counsels good health maintenance. It's helping employers make significant savings without sacrificing the quality of treatment. At Pilot, we're making it less costly to get well with good sound thinking that works. To keep the cost of your new car down, you may have to give up something like the automatic transmission. Fortunately, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer has a solution to this problem. He can give you the automatic transmission, no charge, when you buy Plymouth Horizon with the special option package. So why get stuck with a stick when you can get the automatic at no charge with Plymouth Horizon? See your Baltimore Metro Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Horizon. For people concerned about the cost of getting from one point to another, Eastern Airlines announces a way to make ends meet with Eastern's new Super Saver Fares. Now fly from Baltimore to Tampa for only $79 or to San Francisco for only $129. In fact, all our low Super Saver Fares are between $79 and $129. There's a cancellation penalty and you have to buy tickets 30 days in advance. So if you really want to make ends meet, call Eastern or your travel agent and get complete details. This live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, by Piedmont Airlines, by Subaru, by Food Lion, by Jefferson Pilot, by Hardee's, in North Carolina by NCNB National Bank, in South Carolina by South Carolina National Bank, and in Virginia by Central Fidelity Bank. Nineteen seventeen, Maryland over Georgia Tech at the half and at the conclusion of this game we'll be selecting an outstanding player from each team as the Holly Farms player of the game. Holly Farms will contribute one thousand dollars to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed to the institutions under a conference approved plan in the names of these two players. At the end of the season each player winning the player of the game award will receive a plaque from Holly Farms recognizing this honor. Let's take a look at the Hardy's halftime stats and these are about the strangest statistics that I have seen all year long Billy. Well they really are and again it goes back to the defensive intensity on the part of both of these teams uh, playing very dissimilar styles and the fact that Maryland has come out with a very unusual look in defense and Georgia Tech straight man to man. But in both cases you've got Georgia Tech shooting 29.6 percent or 30 percent on the year they're shooting 53 percent Maryland down there in the low in 41 percent is a 50 percent free uh, field goal shooting percentage team so both way off but I think the defense has created that and Georgia Tech's made up for that really awful shooting because they have dominated the boards on occasion they've had four or five shots on the same possession and there's Len Bias he has 11 of the 19 doesn't matter what the score is he gets his yes uh, Len Bias has been able to spread that defense out some and go one-on-one -on -one and, and doing a good job 
And there, Mark Price, despite the fact that he's developed and singled out for the one man playing uh, man to man against him, has six. Farrell, five. Joseph, four. And Sally, two. And again, if you're Georgia Tech, you have seen these type of defenses before. And when a defense plays this way, you've got to take what they give you. And what they're giving you are 12-foot jump shots, and you've got to go ahead and shoot some of them to loosen the defense up. And you ought to be able to make 12-foot jump shots, too. Well, 12 to 15-foot shots uh, with a foul line extended is a shot that a college player of this caliber has got to be able to make or he doesn't play. There's the remaining games. Only two games in the conference. They have the smallest conference schedule left. That's right. Of course, they've got one win up on everybody else. Home against St. Louis. And then that intersectional play against uh, Oklahoma. And the Terps with uh, three conference games left. Maryland, of course, uh, with five conference losses. Four other teams with four. And they really need to win down the stretch, as they did last year. And lefty, obviously, saying at halftime, if the watch ain't broke, don't fix it, because he's playing the same defense. John Sally's jumper won't go. Farrell got the offensive rebound out of Lewis's hand. They'll bring it back outside. Petway starts the second half instead of Dalrym. And in fact, looking over at Georgia Tech's bench, I do not see Dalrym. Unless I'm missing something, but I don't see no, him at all. I don't see him either, Mike. This is Petway. We'll try to get a report on Dalrymple. See, Petway's standing so far away from the basket. He's out of shooting range. There's no sense standing out there if the defense is going to let you come in close. Farrell is fouled by Len Bias, who is really hot, and picks up his third personal. And here comes Dalrymple. No tape on the knees. May have retaped an ankle or something under a sock. That is number three on Len Bias. Or maybe just ate some Mexican food. <laughs> I'll, just, that happens, I'll you know? just leave that alone. All right. Jeff Adkins starting the second half for Maryland. This is Farrell, who has had a tough time at the free throw line. Only one out of four. Now, I, make out of a, five. I make a little point about Farrell's jump uh, foul shot. He has a little hitch at the top of the foul shot. It's not a smooth motion. He gets it up, and then he stops. Very difficult to do that. Once you get in your motion, it should be smooth. When you get ready to release it, smooth all the way on through. Farrell has six, but that includes only two out of five from the free throw line. It's 19-18, Maryland by one. Atkins to Tom, Speedy Jones, guarded by Sally. This is Bias, Petway's on him. Just goes straight up and so high. Petway's going to have a hard time handling that Bias. He just doesn't have the natural physical ability to stay with a Bias. Not many people do, but Petway is really at a disadvantage. 13 points. Now here's Petway again. Now see how far he stays away from the basket? Farrell with a careless pass, and Jones picked it off for Maryland. Turned out that Dalrymple was dehydrated. Remember in the first half, we said he was gasping for air? That's right. And here's a foul away from the ball, and no. it's, no, they're warning them. Is that That's right? right? Really a good piece of referee in here. Guys are starting to push and hold and grab. Hank Nichols, the official, just stops the game and says, look, let's play basketball. Everybody just pushing and holding. No foul committed. And nice here comes Dell. Checking the ball game. Pat White comes out. You'd like to see more of that, wouldn't you? I think it's a real good move for officials to do that. And then if the players don't respond, then you start sending them home. Branch into Jones, and now back to Adrian Branch. Branch with only four points in the first half, not too many opportunities. Two out of five for four. Bias again, a whistle, and they there it did is. exactly what you said. There it is. After a warning, they call the foul on Joseph. There's Joseph. He's just going to put his hands on, try to hold, try to push in the inside. He gets called for the foul. There's only one on Joseph. Ford will come in and Yvonne will go out. Bobby Crimmins yanked Ford early in the first half also. All right, Joseph. It's Maryland by three with 18.06 to go in the ball game. Zone on the out of bounds, two up two. Top of the circle of Branch, 16th footer, won't go. Bias had the rebound taken away by Farrell. Plays ahead to Dowler. Good inside pass. Dow Ripple to Sally. Let's see if it counts. Boy, that passing, interior passing was excellent by Georgia Tech. We get 
get blocked out a little bit by the official here. And now Sally gets his spot. Good passing. And they're going to say that that foul took place while they were jockeying for position. So it's a non-shooting foul with second on Lewis, and Tech still down by three. Dow Rimple has gotten so good at that, those little passes that seem to slide through arms and under them sometimes. Bad pass intercepted by Jones, his second steal of the ball game. Good hustling defense by Tom Jones. Looks for Adkins and finds it. Both of these teams are going to sleep well tonight. They have really hustled this ball game. Bias at good position on Terrell. Here comes the double team by Price. Bias will go through with the shot anyhow. Won't go. Adkins kept it alive. And Lewis put it in. Lefty wanted to foul on the play also, but right now he's got a five-point lead. He's got a five-point lead because Georgia Tech will just not shoot jump shots. Once again, a shot wide open from 15 feet, and he won't take it. Bobby Grimm is going to call the timeout. You see him jump off that bench. Young man not happy with his ball club. They're down by five, 23-18. We'll be back in Atlanta for more after this. This is Adrian Branch. 15-34 left in the ballgame. It's 23-18, Maryland by five in an extremely intense but low-scoring ballgame. There's a whistle, another foul away from the ball, holding on Dalrymple, trying to catch up with Adrian Branch. Dalrymple knew it. He tries to play that position defense all the time. He does an excellent job with it, but that time Adrian Branch had him beat to the basket. I think as much time as uh, Bobby Kerman spends on one knee, he must, must buy suits at those places, gives you five pair of pants with a jacket. I don't know. Maybe he's got a knee pad under there. Jack Ramsey does that, sits on the top. Jones left all alone, missed the shot. Sally skies a rebound out for Price. This is Dalrymple. Sally back to Dalrymple. Across the lane to Farrell. Won't go long rebound. The Georgia Tech now shooting down 27% on the game. And they are starting to put some shots up. Sooner or later, that'll pay off for them because it keeps them active on the boards. 23-18, Maryland by five. This is Jones low on the blocks back out to Ed. Maryland has been exceptionally patient on offense. Bias. If you don't have a big rebounding team, there's a crossover dribble by Bias. Got away with it. Branch, a little one-on-one -on -one move. Shot down. I don't think that one ever touched his fingertips. It was straight out of the palm of his hand. Now, Dalrymple was right on him. Biggest lead of the game, isn't it? Seven. And it's six for Branch. Seven-point margin at 25 to 18. Farrell to Dalrymple, trying to get Price loose, facing that uh, box and one defense. Dalrymple to Joseph, and he's fouled as Jones reached in, and then Long and Joseph and Bias exchange a few words, bumping shoulders. Now, what you buy, Joseph? He's all under the rest. Did you see that? And I was calling both ends of the floor. Terry Long and Joseph talking to each other. I tell you, if I was going to bump into somebody, Joseph's the last guy I'd pick. You better believe it. Well, of course, Long looks like he can handle himself pretty well in there. Two fouls on Tom Jones called for the reach in there. Dalrymple. Dalrymple is a much better perimeter shooter than he was as a freshman. 25-20, Dalrymple's first two points. And remember, all five Georgia Tech players averaging in double figures. They score an average of 73 points a game. Right now they have 20. But that plan knows the nose defense. Jones, double team. Price almost got the steal, but not quite. Adkins, shot clock is at 15 seconds. Terry Long, nice pass to Branch or Tobias, but a better defensive play by Farrell who knocked it away. And then Adkins knocks it away on the other end. Mark Price trying to get the big one all the time. He's going for the knockout punch. Wasn't a good decision to throw that one cross court. That last sequence down the court, though, was the best man-to-man -man defense I've seen by a team this year. Georgia Tech really second. Everybody is working real hard. 13-10 to go. 25-20. Maryland by five over Georgia Tech. Tom Jones backdoor pass to Adkins. Got it to Long. Finally recovered it. Bias wide open. They won't toss him the ball. Now they get it to him on a tough bounce pass. And he hit it. Oh, what a shot. Glenn Bias has 15 points, Billy, of the 27. 15 points and 
Only taken 11 shots. And still, that defense for lefties been tearing out the whole game. And Adrian Branch reached it. Went for the steal on Farrell. Commits the personal. That's only one on Adrian Branch. One player in foul trouble for Maryland. That's Bias, who has three. Well, I think that Coach Rizzell, he asked for a little water there. I think Coach Rizzell has to be very, very happy with the effort his team's given out there tonight. Because I know how disappointed he was on Sunday. Against Clemson. Yep. He locked that door and left that gym and talked to no one. Pharrell. They're just backing in on Joseph, trying to shut him off. Dal Ripple, 15-footer. That's what I said. hit a couple of those. It's 27-22. The margin back to five with 12-10 left. Gatlin has not played in the second half for Maryland after a brilliant performance on Sunday. But this combination right now is working for Lefty Grizzell. Dalrymple went for the steal. Couldn't quite save it. And you would think Gatlin would come in here shortly just to give Atkins a little rest and to keep that fresh man on price the whole time. We've got a timeout as you look at Bobby Crimmins with exactly 12 minutes left in the ball game from Atlanta. It's Maryland 27, Georgia Tech 22. Maryland 27 to 22. That is 12 minutes left in the game, not the first half, in case you join us late. Yeah, Mike, uh, I, I think that this has uh, been an excellent basketball game for, for the basketball sicko. I mean, That's right. You know, <laughs> the guy that does. It isn't concerned about points. He's concerned about the intensity of the game and the execution. You can see the field goal shooting percentage about 20% below what Georgia Tech normally shoots. Actually, 24% below and about 10 below what Maryland normally shoots. And in the second half, Tech has hit 2 of 6. Maryland has hit 4 of 8 here in the second half. Up by 5. Adkins really being dogged by Price. Gets it to Lewis. Sally is on him. Back to Adkins. Adkins asking that ref for a little relief. Uh, you, you've got Price almost in his jersey. Price runs through a screen set by by Shot clock is at 2. Branch has the ball 35 feet away. And he won't get the shot off. The Didn't shot realize. clock runs out. As I said in the first half, if you're going to try to delay the game somewhat, there's Price right in that T-shirt the whole night long. But you can't let the clock get down under 16 seconds and not start getting ready to work for your shot. And that time, Georgia Tech just forgot all about what they were doing. It's a seventh turnover for Maryland, and Tech has a chance to cut the lead to three with a bucket here. Dal Ripples hit two straight, misses this one, almost tipped in. Now Joseph with a rebound, and he walked. He did walk, but again. Got some help. That's right. Again, you see a situation. You take the jump shot, and then you rebound it. It's almost like a, a play. You know, you don't try to make That's this right. game so difficult. You've got superior rebound, so you take shots, put them up on the boards, and try to go get them. Tremendous intensity with 11 minutes to go. It's Maryland 27, Georgia Tech 22. Lewis left wide open, and he buried a jumper. Lewis does not shoot that often. He averages less than six points a game. It's a big bucket for him to make. But he'll make that shot right at the foul line, looking straight ahead. Four points for Lewis tonight. And it's 29-22. Maryland by seven again. Price has not had much luck getting some shots. Dalrymple, back to Price, he's open this time. Now, Atkins really mad at himself. He went in to try to help out on Dalrymple. When he did, Price was open, and Atkins really upset with himself. If you're guarding Mark Price, you don't worry about helping anybody else, right? right? Well, that's just an instinctive move by Atkins. 29-24, Branch ball five for a five-second count. Dalrymple on Branch. He's staying with him in a closely guarded situation. For five seconds, Branch can't get rid of the ball. And there's your jump. Alternate possession. No, alternate possession rule does not come in there because that was a turnover forced That's by right. the defense. Dalrymple tried to go all the way under. Bias tried to draw the foul. Joseph hustling after the loose ball. And Price gets it. Sally. Triple team.
postseason tournament regular season games won't mean anything, right? <laughs> Dalrymple. Tech has pulled within a point with 9.13 to go, and they'll have a chance to tie it at the free throw line when we come back. 9.13 left. Let's take a pause for this word from Budweiser. the fourth point of the night for John Sally, but a big, big shot. And Georgia Tech now with a chance to tie it for the first time since it was tied at 15 with about five and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. John Sally with a big play inside again. Offensive rebounding. Georgia Tech's dominant area when they go up against Maryland. Sally ties it for the free throw. The three-point play makes it 29-29, and here's full court pressure. Adkins has to pick up his dribble. Got it to Bias. Joseph almost pulled it away. Watch out for Bias. Price has got the loose ball. Len Bias tried to do too much. Ahead to Sally. Partially blocked. He won't get the basket. Bodies going down all over the place. And it was Lewis and Dalrymple going to the floor. There's the full court pressure. Up court. Mark Price just all over the floor. Gets the double team. Atkins has to fire at the bias. Now watch who comes down to That's help right. out on bias. Mark Price, here he is again. And then. All right, for young players watching this game tonight, here's Mark Price, normally a leading scorer type. He's not getting the shots tonight because of the defense playing and his teammates are open. Instead, what's he do? He gives it everything he's got on the defensive end of the court. That's the mark of a true champion. Dal Rimple getting some attention, and one of the officials goes over to talk to Bobby Crimmins. He has to come out of the ball game right now, or else Bobby's got to take a timeout, and he is going to come out. Petway will come in. Now, remember, we were told that Dal Rimple suffered exhaustion, uh, dehydration in the first half, and if anything, it's uh, 15 degrees hotter in here right now. It's not as hot as it was up in Maryland when Lefty <laughs> had it for North Carolina the other day. Oh, I tell you, you can bake bread in there. Stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farms player for the game from each school. Already have a couple of likely choices out there. John Sally goes to the line. And the free throw. Georgia Tech, for the first time in a long time, has the lead at 30 to 29. Two in a row for Sally, just a 58% free throw shooter. And this one. Interesting thing about him, Billy, is that uh, he has hit several free throws lately. He seems to have changed the style, done a very good job. Bias wide open. Nobody can get the ball to him. Branch almost turned it over. He gets the bias in the corner. Now, Maryland be smart to pull it back out again and just get back into their tempo in the game. Georgia Tech has taken the tempo away from them. Len Bias with 15 of Maryland's 29 points. Bias wins that ball. Gets it to Bias. Trying to fake Joseph. Now goes up straight over him. Shot his short rebound. Petway. And he Bias a little bit too anxious for his shot. Maryland has gone stone cold to the delight of a sellout crowd here in Georgia Tech. I think the next possession, Maryland will be wise to get a timeout. Like to just slow things back down and get back into their game. Look at how far they drop off of Petway when he has the ball. Look back inside the 10 feet. Well, Petway's 30 feet from the basket. He only has to beat 15. He, see, he's so far away, he doesn't have his jump shot. Doesn't even look for the shot. The key for Georgia Tech put the ball up on the offensive board. Shot clock is at eight. Avon Joseph in the lane. Takes it home. That's six for Joseph, and it's 33-29. They've exploded, Bill. Maryland needs a timeout bad right here. Doesn't look like they're going to take one. This is Lewis with a perimeter jumper. Won't go. Ripped away by Sally. Next dead ball situation is the television timeout. Well, when, when you get a, a run like this against your ball club, you can't wait for TV timeouts. Georgia Tech obviously is finding the openings and the holes. They're keeping their pressure on defensively. Tech is up by four. Sally. Georgia Tech. 
Tech has come roaring from behind to take a six-point lead over Maryland. We'll be back in Atlanta in a moment. To the ACC Sports Center with Paul Cameron. Check your local listings for that. And following the ACC Sports Center, Clemson at North Carolina. That's a 3.30 start. That's the second game of the doubleheader. It's the last game at Carmichael. It's going to be a couple of standing ovations, maybe a couple of tears or two over there. Then Georgia Tech at Duke is the game that leads it off. Boy, that should be in almost the same thing as this one tonight. There'll be no tears from opposing coaches. Oh, no. No, they won't cry. Tears of joy, possibly. That went back in the ball game. He was out of bounds. He caught the ball. Adrian Branch with that cross-court pass to let him a little far. Yeah, not a wise pass by Adrian Branch. Excellent call by the official. Look at him right on top of the play. 35-29. It's been all Georgia Tech in the last five minutes. Sally Price around the screen. ACC basketball on the Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Tunnel Production Network has been brought to you in part by Mazda. Dalrymple, that short jumper won't go. Petway offensive rebound. There it is. Dalrymple has really been the key to the game. He's the first guy that started putting up the jump shots, opening things up for Georgia Tech. Again, to go back to Bobby Crimmins all that time out and instructed his team just to get that ball up in the air. Bryce wanted the ball, got around the screen, down Ripple didn't quite see him in time. Shot clock is at 20 seconds. Georgia Tech with a lot of time left at 5.50 on the game clock. Joseph making it. He's looking, he's looking for it. Cross court to Petway, checks the shot clock, which is now at 9, and Petway will shoot. He's a good shooter, man. He is a good shooter, and the shot's there. As I said, at the start of this game, when a team plays a funny defense like that, you got to take advantage of what they give you. First two points for Petway, and it's Georgia Tech by eight. Their biggest lead, 37-29. Bias on the nice pass from Gatta. I, I think if you're Maryland, you got to think about getting out of that defense now because you got to get back into this ball game. 17 for Bias, 17 of the 31, and it's 37-31, Georgia Tech. Tough to beat any team three times in one season, particularly a team as talented and as aggressive as Maryland has played tonight. Joseph is fouled by Long, and Joseph says something to Terry Long after the whistle blows. They've been talking to each other for a while. They have, but it's been clean, hard, aggressive play. You know, you don't like to see a lot of mouth in basketball, but these guys have really been working hard all night long. Joseph is just happy to get one off. Surprised as intense as it's been. They have enough energy left to talk. 37-31, Joseph at the line out of Cap Haitian Haiti. 70% free throw shooter. Joseph with seven points on the night, and the lead is back to seven for Georgia Tech. Five minutes exactly to go. Nice job by Joseph. He just relaxed, got his composure, and Georgia Tech keeps up this pressure. Jones in the backcourt to Gatlin. And you made a great point on Sunday when Gatlin gets the ball, the press seems to just dissolve. Well, he didn't play much here in the second half. Tipped Atkins. out of bounds, out to Merrill. Atkins has been in almost the whole second half. And of course, coming off that 14 out of 15 uh, game of the Clemson was the only guy really, he and Bias, the only two guys that really gave him the effort. Had a career high 28 in that one. This is Branch at the baseline, all the way underneath. Got it off to Bias, who almost missed the layup. I, I think Len Bias was surprised he got the ball. Yeah, I do too. 19 points for Bias in 39 33. The margin a half dozen with four and a half minutes to go. Sally way outside. Branch on him. Price got around the screen. Dow Ripple penetrates. Six points for Dalrymple. And Adrian Branch knows he's with him. There's Dalrymple's every place he goes. Gatlin with that little half jump and half set shot. Bad pass by Sally. Good steal. Jones clobbered as he went to the bucket. Boy, he got hammered. Petway and Avon Joseph waiting there for him. John Sally really upset with himself throwing that ball in bounds. He just kind of lost some concentration, threw it right into the Maryland players. You can see that you know, he, he really just lost it. Maybe went colorblind in that play, but good pass by Bias. Jones tries to take it to the basket. Oh. Everybody going for it. Now give Sally the personal his third. And 
and Tom Jones goes to the free throw line. Almost 80% from here this year. Got a good hit, a big one. He has an excellent release, whether it be on the jump shot or the foul shot. Five points for Tom Jones. Been equally effective starting and coming off the bench for Maryland this year. Margin cut to five and now to four. With 4.01 left, and Jeff Baxter will come into the ballgame for Maryland. Gatlin will go out. This is for pressure. Pressure defense, and let's see if Lefty's not only going to change the full court and go in full court, but also get in a situation when he gets down in the half court that he's out of the box in one tight zone. This is Terrell back in. Petway comes out for Bobby Kremer. Sally trying to get an inbounds. Does the price. He's double teamed. Back to Sally. Now down Rimble beats the 10 second count. Maryland's going to stay right back in that zone. And Baxter is the fresh body on Price. Now Perel should have learned something sitting over that bench of where that opening is. Not be afraid to take it in there and look for that shot. Perel looking for Price. Can't find him outside. Shot clock is at 10 seconds. Fans calls out the down Rimple to do something with it. Lost control. It's at five. Tries to oh, penetrate. Steal. Baxter with a steal. Price is the only man back, and he can't catch him. And Jeff Baxter with a great steal. Shows you all that speed. Cuts it to two. Again, there's a case with Georgia Tech looking for something that's not there. Baxter has always been regarded as an excellent ball handler. And boy, is he fast. Right now, he's on Price. Good move by Lefty Grizzell to go ahead and use that full court pressure, trying to come up with a big steal. But when he drops back now in that zone, he may have to come out and get him a little. 2.51 left in this one. Timeout with Georgia Tech, 41, Maryland, 39. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. This buzz for everyone in the spotlight before the show begins. This buzz for you. There's no one else who does it quite the yeah. way you do. It's so here's you, to you. Showtime, baby. Do. The king of music. Hey, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Oh, <laughs> hey, man. Nice job. This buzz for you. Hi, Mr. Johnson. Little one-on-one? -on -one? Nah, I can't, Jimmy. Your father wants to talk about a pension plan for his company. What's the matter? You over the hill? What sets the Jefferson Standard agent apart from other insurance agents is not just that he sells a wide range of innovative business insurance, or that he's specially trained to give comprehensive insurance advice. It's that little extra he gives to his clients. Jefferson Standard. We give a little extra. You come here to talk insurance or play basketball? Both. Georgia Tech by two, 41-39 with 2.51 left. Had a couple of streaks here. One Georgia Tech pulled away. Maryland has come back to with a, you know, a bucket now. They really have, Mike. And what you have to remember now with the 45-second shot clock on for the whole ball game, the delay game becomes a very difficult thing to pull off. A lot of coaches want to use that full 45 seconds, but when you do, then you get out of your offensive flow. A very difficult thing to do to say to your players, we want to use up this clock, but then get a good shot at the end. And sometimes they just don't do it. You've got to look at Lefty Brazil. There you see the rebounding, 11 to 4 in the second half. Georgia Tech just dominated the boards. 245 left in the game. Price being guarded by Jeff Baxter. The junior has come in to play some defense and made a big steal on the layup at the other end. Trying to get a screen for Price. That way is the guy that may end up with the shot here because Maryland's not going to play him. Price got around the screen and oh, buried it. What a rainbow. Great shot by Mark Price. You're talking about a gut play. That is 10 for Price. And it's 43, 39 the margin for Branch. He has the winning points in four games for Georgia Tech this year. Bias too strong on a jumper. Baxter with a big rebound as Terry Long kept it alive. Game clock at two minutes. Maryland down by four. Baxter will run the offense. Three very capable point guards on this ball club. Good double team by Price. Baxter left alone. Shot clock is uh, no factor right now. It's at 22. Maryland needs a good shot. I don't know if that's it. Oh, uh, yeah, it is a good shot. Land bias, 21 points of Maryland's 41. 
Yeah, I'd have to say if you call anybody unstoppable, it's got to be Len Bias. Well, those are all American type plays. Yeah. Rice hit that jumper. Bias coming right back. At top. Bias nine out of 16. It's 43, 41. The margin two. A giant possession here. Maryland will get the ball back because of the shot clock at least one more time. Shot is no good, but the foul is on Adrian Branch, who came back to try to double T. Branch did have a little bit of the ball here, but Joseph is just so strong on the inside. Good catch by Joseph. He goes up, Branch comes down. He did have the ball, but he also got a piece of that arm. And that's a case where if the fella is not strong enough, you know, the ball gets knocked out of his hands. Devon Joseph is very, very strong. 116 left to go in the game. Big free throws here for Von Joseph, who is only one out of three tonight from the line. Normally a good free throw shooter, 70.8%. These are big ones. I really like the way he's grabbed his composure. You sure he's one out of three? I thought he made two out of three the last time. I thought so too. I, was just yeah, I think at, that uh, makes him three out of four. I think you're, no, that. I think you're right, because you commented on his style and how he uh, shot two very well. Regardless, of 44-41, short on this, rebound to Jones. 1.15 left. Maryland should still be patient here. I try to fire up a bad shot. Baxter, Tobias, double team. Back out to Baxter. Mark Trice running all over the court. He's not guarding Baxter. Baxter will be open. Jones with a tough shot, won't go. Branch with a rebound. With 53 seconds left, that is a big play, except the fact that Georgia Tech only had five team fouls before that. That's right. Jones takes a good-looking jumper. Georgia Tech has the ball. Don Ripple always around the ball somewhere, and there was the foul. They actually can use one more foul. The scoreboard says that was only their 15th foul. I thought they had five before that. Branch to Baxter. Maryland needs to get off a shot in a hurry. There's only 40 seconds left. They're down by three. And it's Adrian Branch. Whoa, nice. tough shot. The clock continues to run. Georgia Tech taking its time on an out of bounds. Now, Maryland, I don't know if they realize it, but you know, this game could be over. They've got to come out of the zone. There's 24 seconds left Why to go in the game. The and now Adrian Branch hustles out after Dalry, but we're down to 16 seconds. They've got to understand that this game is over if they don't foul. And he does. Georgia Tech took the ball down in there. They've been smart to just bring it over half court and stand. Maryland was back in that zone. Right now would be a good time to take that time out and get reorganized. They Adrian Branch. The ball, have they? No. Branch well, picks up his third person. Well, you, you got to call a timeout here to get your team organized as to what defense and what offense they're going to play the remainder of this game. Talking it over on the Maryland sideline, Bobby Crimmins talking to Upon Joseph. will go to the free throw line. He has not shot tonight. 70% shooter on the year. And hit the first. Now this is the really big one. That puts it at the even number. But now you want a timeout for a lot of Yeah, there you go. There you go. You want to go ahead and try to freeze up the shooter. Plus, to get your ball caught to understand the circumstances that you're playing on. 12 seconds to go. You're down two. If you're down three, you got one thing. If you're down two, you got something else. Who are you going to pop? There's a million things to talk about at this point. 12 seconds left to go in this ballgame. 45-43. The executive producer of ACC Basketball is John Shreves. Our coordinating producer is Quasa Star. Mike Berg produced tonight's game, and Jim Dussel directed it. Our technical director, Ken Dennis, and the associate director, Ann Keith. And we want to thank everyone else who was associated with tonight's game from Atlanta, Georgia. And statistician Kevin Barnes who kept us up to date all night. Mark Packer our floor manager for hustling us back and forth from one spot to another. You get a few miles on you in this gym. <laughs> well I think we have seen a game that's played under 50 points by both teams that, that has really been a joy to me. I, this was great basketball in terms of the intensity the way the teams went after each other and regardless of how it comes out no matter who you're rooting for, you got to be proud of the effort the team put in. Well, 
they certainly got their money, money's worth tonight here in Alexander Memorial Coliseum. And that man has got to be wondering about that 500th victory. We have said very little about it tonight. I but, would uh, say this, Mike. He no more is thinking about 500 wins right now. Oh, I don't mean not right now. Another thing, I don't think Left even thinks about it at all until somebody brings it up. <laughs> That's right. All the reporters have been beating on him for a couple of weeks now. And I read that uh, article about Tony Kornheiser. Yes. From up in Washington talking about if Lefty doesn't get this, he would have his 500th against Townsend State, which would be a negative. I don't think it's a negative. 500 wins hard for any man again. Dalrymple makes it a three-point game. Baxter fouled by Mark Price. And he did that because they had a foul left to give. They're not in the bonus yet. That's right. Three seconds well, off the game clock. Mark might have been, and of course you're trying to be a little cuter, he might have gone and let it get him even farther down, you know, and pick up another couple of seconds. He doesn't want to fall here. Ten seconds left in the game. Baxter trying to penetrate off to Jones. Jones jumper won't go. Out the pit way. Baxter okay. reaches in and fouls him with two seconds left. That way he should have got rid of the ball. in College Park, Maryland. This is ACC Basketball. 